He is the world's most celebrated astrophysicist and probably one of the easiest recognized scientists, Neil deGrasse Tyson. He is bringing readers on a complex journey into the unknown world of the galaxy in his brand new book, To Infinity and Beyond, A Journey of Cosmic Discovery. We are pleased to welcome Dr. Tyson live this morning. Uh, great to see you there out in outer space there. How about it? Yeah, I'm live from space. Yes, that, that's <laughs> clearly... <laughs> yes, there he's floating in that zero gravity situation. Hey, very briefly, your reaction to the now absolute proof that there are aliens from another planet that have been presented in Mexico. What do you think about that yesterday? Yeah, so I had a couple of questions like, why do they look so human? <laughs> you know, they had head, eyes, nose, mouth, shoulders, ar arms, legs. Most life on Earth that has no D... That, that most life on Earth with DNA in common with us mm -hmm. doesn't look that human so if you if you're life form from another planet it, it, it seems to me we'd look different but fine but if it does look human how come it had a nose if you're a two thousand year old mummy your nose is gone okay? right yeah you, you got it like a, the, the bone <laughs> socket there but fine let it be so I, I think it's great they're bringing aliens into congress so now the next step is offer those aliens to other scientists to check uh -huh. on whether this is authentic or not. That's how we do, that's how we roll. Oh, that's, that's, that's what we did in the Apollo era. That's crazy the Apollo science era, we brought back talk. Rocks. <laughs> we brought back rocks and handed rocks to all the scientists around the world mm -hmm. so they can analyze it too. So let's do that. And then, then we'll, we'll see how, that, how this goes down. You're so good at infusing kind of, uh, you know, pop culture into everything that you do. Did that aptitude come naturally for you as you were advancing in the field of science? I, I, let me not call it an aptitude. Let me call it an observation okay. that uh, if I know the pop culture you walk into the room with, the scaffold of pop culture, I don't have to tell you who Beyonce is or who President Trump is. or okay, I don't have to tell you any of that. You know that. And so I observe that and I say, how can I attach science to this so that we don't have to start from the beginning? And, and then the science has much more relevance to you. And this, this was crafted in my podcast, Star Talk, mm -hmm. where we combine science, pop culture, and humor. And we learn that when we thread that, people come back for more. And then this book, which is produced by National Geographic, so you know the book is going to be beautiful, all right? Because that's how they roll. And it's a fully illustrated about this journey of what it is to look up from Earth and just wonder... Not only what is it that's up there, but how might I get there? The well, very first people to want to travel were called aeronauts who ascended themselves through the air. Will that get you to the moon? Will that get you to Mars? You learn, no, it won't. You need like extra science and rockets and rocket fuel, but it doesn't stop the dreaming. And so this book is an arc. From the surface of the earth to the edge of the universe and the dreams we still have. Let me ask you ascend. quickly here, Dr. Tyson. I, I'm privileged to know Jim Lovell, and one of the things that he's told me is how disappointed he is that in 50 years we've really done no additional deep space exploration. We, we haven't gone back to the moon. Do you think that we're really on the horizon of maybe sending mankind out there into space to uh, either do some physical exploration or colonization? Is that in, in our lifetimes? Of course, he's biased because he's a human, and he's a human who went to the moon. Mm -hmm. But we have human emissaries. We have robotic exploration of the outer planets. We landed on moons of outer planets. We have the Voyager craft that exited the solar system. So it's not like we're not trying to reach for the stars. But yes, he's a human, and he was a human who was sent to the moon. He has an understandable bias. Are we going to send humans to Mars? I don't see why not. But all this talk of settlements there? No. Mars is, Mars is, 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 if you look at Antarctica, yeah. Antarctica is warmer and balmier than Mars, and nobody's lining up to live in <laughs> condos in Antarctica. That's so right. So I can imagine visiting Mars, going to a theme park with a different gravity and look at the moons of Mars and the Earth from a distance, but then you come back. Yeah. I like Earth. Earth. It's a good place. It's a good place. Real <laughs> quick, in 10 seconds, where can we get more information about your book, To Infinity Beyond, and also your podcast, Neil? Oh, yeah, thanks. Well, they're both 
uh, available where you get your podcast or where you get your books. Uh, my website, neildegrassetyson.com, are pointers to all of that. So uh, if you wanted to dig in, it's an offering. To, <laughs> I, I'm just a conduit to the cosmos for whoever will pay attention. And you are a wonderful ombudsman for astrophysicists all across <laughs> the world. Dr. Tyson, thanks so much for joining us live here in Chicago. And good luck with the book. Thank I can't you. wait to read it. We will be back with more of Good Day Chicago from Terra Firma right after this.